Welcome everybody. This is EA Global Summit 2020 virtual conference connecting global EA practitioners. This is Juhi from Summit team. This is day two of conference. We have been seeing fantastic response over 1000 people attending this conference. We are having exciting and informative, uh, informative sessions coming up from speakers and we have sophisticated collaboration platform to give you all the best experience of attending this conference. For this session, we have Takeshi, CEO of Spark Systems Japan, presenting here three useful features you must know in EA. And uh, we also have the Teams channel ready and set up for you to connect and interact with Takeshi and other practitioners after the session and throughout the summit. Please refer to the chat window to find the link to Teams channel. Please log your questions for the session in the Teams channel. And Takeshi will be answering few questions in the Q&A session at the end, but you can continue a detailed discussion post the session in Teams channel. Now over to you, Takeshi. You can now present your session and share your screen. I'll make you a presenter now. Thank you for introducing. So, uh, okay, I will share. Um, can you see my screen? Yeah we, can, yeah, we can see your screen. Okay, thank you. So let's start my session. Thank you for joining my session. My session title is three useful features you must know in enterprise architect. First, let me introduce myself. My name is Takeshi Kono. I am CEO of Spax in Japan, and I started Spax Japan in 2003. When I started Spax Japan, there were about 70 users in Japan. Now, there are over 60,000 users in Japan. Enterprise Architect is one of major modeling tools in Japan. My first Enterprise Architect is 3.0. At that time, looking back now, it was very difficult to use. Many Japanese users also said it was difficult to use, not intuitive. But now, many said it is very easy to use. There are great enhancements in the last 17 years. Today, I want to tell you and share three useful features in 30 minutes session. In the program, I failed to tell my time correctly, so my session duration is 45 minutes, but my session will be about 30 minutes. The three features are filters, legends, and hand-drawn mode. You may already know any of these features, but knowing how and when to use the features will make them more useful to you. These features are all for diagrams, there is a reason why I chose these three as the features to introduce. EA is not a diagramming tool like Visio, but now I know some users use EA as diagramming tool. Making diagram is not a goal, but start to share model among stakeholders. To use diagrams more, we need to know useful features for diagrams. So today, three features are all used after making diagram. Making diagram is a start. And more, I think it is important to know how and when use features. I would like to also share tips for features. If you have any question, Please enter your question by the Microsoft Team channel. The Global Summit team offer me the Microsoft Team channel, Spark System Japan channel. I will answer your question after introducing three features, and I will upload this slide to the channel later. First, I want to tell you filters and layers. Layers are very new feature. It is added in the version 50.1. The filters can be used in the older versions. Basic behaviors is the same in these two features. I want to show you these features in the demo. First, to use the filter features in the layout ribbon, press the filters and the layer button here. 
The window of the same name is opened here. In the toolbar, press the button to add a new filter. Enter the name, for example, test, and then specify the condition to filter. In this case, for example, name contains A. Then check the filter to apply the filter to diagram. If elements do not match the condition, these elements are shown as faded like this. You can select the filter effect from fade or grayscale or hide. If you select the hide effect, elements do not match condition will be hidden like this. If you select this select effect, elements match condition will be selected. The defined filters are stored in current project files, so other members can use the filter in the same project file. There is a similar feature in the layout ribbon filter panel here. You can apply filters from here, for example, select name areas and enter A, and the result is the same as before. But this is temporary and cannot be saved. You can use the filter feature quickly by using this panel. Layer is a similar feature to filter, but you can select elements for each layer manually. Layer is tab here, and there is a three layer. And layer one is these two elements, layer two is these two elements, and three is these three elements. So you can specify manually for each layer has each element. Or you can hide selected layers like this. So effect is very similar to filters. Now, I want to share four tips about filter feature. First tip is behavior when enable multiple filters. In this situation, if an element matches at least one of the filters, the element is not filters. In other words, Using multiple filter is or condition. For example, this filter is version is one, like this, and this filter is version is two. So, and if I check both checkbox, so I enable these two filters, version one or version two elements are highlighted and other elements are filters like this. If you want to use AND condition, so want to show elements matches all conditions, you need to use the filter group. Create filter group is from this toolbox, new filter grouping, and then enter some name, and open properties of this group. Here, you can select operator AND or OR, and you must add filters under this group. And so these groups are applied and or, or conditions. Second tip is range of filter effect. When you enable a filter, not only card diagram, but all other diagrams are applied. So you can switch other diagrams with filters and more. When generating document or printing diagrams, the filter is also applied. For example, enable one filter and switch to other diagram. The diagram is already applied this filter like this. Especially when you review diagrams, you create filters for review and, and enable the filter, then switch diagrams. This is a very useful for review. 
Third tip is behavior of hide mode. When you select hide as effect, elements which do not meet conditions, they are hidden and unseen. For example, select this filter and change effect to hide. So all elements do not meet condition is hidden. So when you apply this hide effect in this mode, you cannot select hidden elements. So by using this effect, if you want to select and move some specific elements only in many elements, you can avoid moving unwanted elements. For example, pressing Ctrl A to select all elements and drag to move and uncheck to filter. So hidden elements are not moved. So this is very useful effect for complex diagrams, which has many elements. The last tip is filter feature in the layout ribbon. You can use two special filter, relationships and hierarchy. When you select the relationship filter, selected elements and connected elements are highlighted. For example, select relationships filter and select elements like this. Selected and connected elements are only highlighted. And if you select a hierarchy filter here and select elements, Selected elements and parents and children are highlighted like this. These two filters are very useful on complex diagram with many elements, but you need to use this filter panel, not this filter feature. The second useful feature is the legend. This legend is very, very useful, so you may know the basic function of legends. First, legends are simple elements to show pairs of color and description. But now, legends have a great feature to apply color to elements dynamically. You can specify condition and apply color to elements or connectors. In detail, please see demo. You can create a legend elements from this common group, drag diagram legend, onto diagram and double click this element to open property dial or you can specify property here properties windows legend tab these two are equal first you select target elements or connectors here then select target property in this case elements and version Then enter value and color. For example, version 1.0 is gray and 2.0 is yellow. And when you use value, numeric value like this, you can use this use numeric evaluation feature. For example, over 2.5 is wet, for example. And after adding all pair, color, and value, right click the element and select toggle out color. You can apply color at once. This element is red and select here, version is 3.0, so over 2.5, so it's Card as red. Like this, legend can apply color under specified condition. You can copy legend and paste onto another diagrams. So you can reuse legend setting for other diagrams. And to maximize legend feature, we need to change the position meaning of the legends. 
Legends are not elements to apply color, but to divide data and presentation. Under many situations, you want to apply color to elements and connectors. Please do not apply color directly to them. Stop apply color, but please consider why you want to apply color. There must be a reason, threshold, or a rule to apply color. For example, in the last demo, we want to visible version property. So you define the reason or rule as model data. In concrete, they are often defined as tagged values in many cases. So in this demo, we assume elements has new difficulty property as its value is high, middle, or low. In this case, please do not apply color. For example, high is red or etc. So do not apply color to element directly, but add the information as tagged values. For example, select elements and select the property window tags, tab, add new tagged value, D, F, K, L, T, difficulty and value is, for example, high. You can apply this tagged value manual like this, but it's not efficient for many elements one by one. So like me, uh, it's <laughs> not uh, speedy. So you need uh, to uh, set tagged value one by one, but it's very useful features. Uh, tagged value definition from this button here. Today, I already have uh, this data here, so copy and tag name is difficulty and paste detail and then create tag value again. But now I can select value here, this list box. And value is middle, is a default value. Again, add new tag. And if I want to change value here, I can select this list. So inner values. Now, after setting all the values and create legend as before, but now uh, I already created legend, so right click and apply. So these elements are colored correctly. So what are the benefits of doing something so troublesome like this? Yes, there are four benefits. First benefit is you can change color depends on situation or objective. In the last demo, if you are interested in the new difficulty property value, the color information is very useful and intuitive. But if you are not interested in the property, the color is unnecessary. In some case, it is noise. And if you want a different aspect as color, it's impossible when you apply color directly by dividing data and presentation by legends. Everyone can apply any color depends on everyone's interest. For example, in this case, I'm not interested in this difficulty, but uh, I'm interested in version information and check to go out color and apply here. I can switch colors easily. And second benefit is you can remove color if you do not need color in single step. Oh, I don't need any color. So just check here and return all colors as default colors. The third benefit is when you want to change color, you do not need to change color for elements one by one. You only need to modify setting of legends. For example, I apply this 
again. And if I want to change color of version 2.0 of yellow, to, for example, blue, I don't need to change color one by one. Just open property dialog again, select definition and change color. And all elements are changed at once. And the last fourth benefit is you can reuse the tagged value in other features like filter, list, or model search. In this demo, I will show you the list view with tagged value. On the diagram background, right click to switch view to list view. And then right click a header of list and add tagged value column and select difficulty. So I don't need to uh, type the name, but select because I already defined tagged value types. So I can see the value here in the list. You can print this list to the printer. If we apply color directly to elements, we cannot show color to the list, or we cannot see information here. Color is not visible to in this, our color is not property. So similar to this, we can use the tagged value for such feature, such condition. The last feature is hand-drawn mode and custom style. Both allow you to temporarily change the display of the diagram, change its appearance. You can apply this mode by the properties windows. I will show you these two modes. At first, hand drawn mode is here, like this. Hand drawn mode is, as the name, drawing elements and connectors like handwriting. All connectors are drawn differently. And you can specify font for hand drawing mode. And when you choose custom style, all elements are drawn as simple rectangle with name like this, and all connectors are drawn simple line. These two features simply change appearance, but they can also be useful. The hand drawn mode can be used as an intuitive means to communicating the meaning of diagram when one type of diagram is used for different purposes. For example, use a class diagram to domain model and implementation model. These two models are the same class diagram, so it is difficult to understand each class diagram is domain model or implementation model. In this case, the domain model is more abstract, so all class diagrams of the domain model are hand drawn. So, for example, uh, return to hand drawn mode. So, if you open diagram, class diagram, and see it's hand drawn or not, in this case, this diagram is hand drawn. So, it's this is domain model class diagram. And if not hand drawn mode, at this class, diagram is uh, implementation model. So you can easily distinguish each model. And custom style is very effective when you want to focus elements and relationships between elements. UML and CCML can represent a variety of information in diagram, but it is unnecessary for some purposes. By using custom style, Everyone can focus elements and their relationships. And more, one trip. You can apply any icon to elements in the custom style. It is nice feature to distinguish elements. I will show you applying icon. At first, you need any image file icon. In this case, PNG file. From Windows Explorer, drag file and drop onto EA diagram and select image asset. You can use this image as is, 
But in this case, I don't need image. So right click and delete from dialog. But elements itself is still here. I need the image asset elements here. Then drag, ah, sorry, uh, I need to switch to custom style. And then drag this image from browser to elements and here set as icon. You can use icon like this very easily. Drag again and drop as icon. You can change size or position of icons. For example, uh, position is top left or uh, size is smaller, like this. Today, I have introduced three useful features and tips to use them effectively. Filters and layers, uh, legends, and handle mode, custom style mode. Please try with your model if you find a nice feature. Once again, important thing is not only what the feature, but how and when you use a feature. So my session is over. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, enter your comments to Teams sessions, team channel, sorry. Uh, hello, Takeshi. Thank you so much. Uh, the session is very useful and we have, we've been receiving uh, comments for your session parallelly in Teams. People are seeing this very useful. Thanks for your time. Yes, thank you so much. So I have a question from Harry. Can you describe useful features of tags? Sorry, can you describe? Tag, tag, tagged values is meaning. Um, hmm. uh, useful features of uh, tagged values. Uh, 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 another nice feature, uh, uh, not included in my slides. Uh, it has very useful features. Uh, so uh, one of the very useful, uh, nice features of tagged values, in this case today, I use this enum uh, type. So in this enum type is very uh, useful because uh, every user do not need to enter each value, but there are many other types uh, EA offers for example, spin uh, to enter uh, numeric values or uh, Boolean to or force, etc. So if uh, you have an idea to use uh, tagged values, in other words, uh, if you want to add some property to each element or connectors, I recommend to uh, define tagged value type so you don't need to enter the name and value um, one by one. I hope my, uh, okay. this is a, my okay. Answer. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Takeshi. So yeah, we will post the rest of the questions in Spark Systems Japan channel, and uh, mm -hmm. please um, uh, respond to the questions and feedbacks when you have time. Thanks, uh, thanks, Takeshi, once again. Uh, thank you so much. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Um, thanks all for participating. Um. The video of this session will be made available after this conference and we will be notifying you all once it is available. Uh, all, uh, please join MS Teams and continue the conversation with Takeshi and other EA experts too. Thanks everyone. Thanks for joining. Thank you for joining my session and thank you. Thank see you. you later. See you later in the channel. Yes, yeah, see you. Yeah.